right, three, two, one, and welcome to the Hello. weekly update show. Got get our, some new toys, Conan. Groovy music going on. <laughs> this is awesome. New toys over there, very cool. Yeah, should we just keep jamming out? Yeah. Nobody wants to hear us <laughs> talk about the TSP. Nobody wants to hear about TSP, at least of all me. So you guys can see we uh, we have a nice uh, setup we're working on. Hopefully things will get better. We're kind of still getting the equipment figured out, but way better than what we used to do in the basement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But hopefully every week the show will get a little better. Uh, and as you'll see, the last couple of weeks that's... Uh, it's been pre-recorded. We are going to continue doing that, mostly because our travel schedule doesn't really allow us to uh, be live and in the same place all the time. So it just wasn't working, and we can hopefully do the show a little better. It'll still come out at the same time, you know, 6.30 on Sundays right now, unless we figure out a better time. We may try to put it out a little earlier on Sundays just to give you guys more time to look at it during the day. But for now, this is the way we're going to roll it. Yeah, I think it'll be fine because we're going to get on there and answer questions uh, well, you know, if we, if we do it at 6.30 or whatever time we broadcast it to Facebook. Um, yeah, you, you know. could still, it'll still show up for most of you guys as a live broadcast. And they'll have a, a chat section and you can put questions in there. Yep. And we'll come back later and Jerry will come back later and kind of answer those questions the best we can. Yeah, think of it like, you know. The uh, financial version of Saturday Night, Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live. Be all set. Not as yeah. funny. No. But uh, pre recorded. <laughs> Maybe but still more live. funnier looking, but that's okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into it, man. We're ready. All right. Weekly update to August 2020. Okay. I am not a George Soros fan. However, uh, this is a pretty good quote that he's got that I think is kind of generic to anybody that's good at anything. I'm only rich because I know what I'm. I know when I'm wrong. I basically have survived by recognizing my mistakes. So the idea here is um, it's really easy if, if uh, you kind of take a guess at a stock or somebody gives you a tip or whatever and you buy some stock, it goes up. Maybe you do that a couple times in a row uh, and you, you think you're pretty good at it and then one time it goes against you. The, the guys, that are, guys and girls that are good at this stuff, it's when, when the market goes against them they sit down and figure out, you know, not necessarily that they made a mistake, but what, what happened that the market went against them. And so to, to, to recognize that it went against you is pretty easy. But then to take the time to figure out why it went against you and what you're going to do, do different the next time, um, you know, whether you're playing hockey or basketball or uh, finance or anything, you, you have to recognize what uh, you, not that what you did wrong, but what you did, the thing went against you, and how do you make an adjustment and, and try it again the next time? Right, we got to learn from it, right? Yeah, learn from yeah. it. Yeah. I just hate the word mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. It's not a mistake. It's just, a, hey, I tried it this way, it didn't work, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust and, and keep on moving. Okay. So, I use this term divergence uh, at the end of the, the post, and... I sort of, I think I should have defined it a little bit. So if you're watching the show, you get to hear the definition on the show and uh, you can relate it back to what I put up on the post. Yeah, and it's and good to make a point, good time to make a point that uh, it's better, it's more valuable, I think. It's kind of like when you go to school, like it's always better to do the reading first. Yeah, true. So if you read the post first, even if it's just before you watch the show, you're going to get more out of it because you will have already kind of gotten the pre-reading. You'll be thinking about the topics that Jerry's hitting on. So I, I think that it's a, a better way to kind of do it, but you know, may not always work for you. Yeah. Yeah. You might not always be able to do it, but that's definitely true. And so the way I've been putting together the, the weekly update show is I'll go through all the slides from uh, the post. Right. And then like today we're going to talk about, do a deep dive into volume. Right. Cause I had some, some people asking me over the course of the last week or so, um, you know, we did RSI and MACD last week, and guys wanted to know about volume. But I didn't talk about that on the post. So there's going to be the, the, the post and the show will not always be the same. They probably won't almost ever be the same. Uh, but I will always do the, the charts, like the daily charts or any of the ones that are really applicable um, from, the, from the post. Yeah, so there's so value in doing, seeing both. both do for both, sure. definitely. Okay. So we get some divergence between uh, the C fund and the I fund. We're going to get to that. Divergence just means one of the uh, the C fund is going up pretty clearly on Friday. The I fund clearly going down. So if the idea is that over time, when 
the stock funds are going up, they're all more or less going up together. Uh, when they diverge, meaning one goes up and one goes down, it, it usually, uh, well, it always is going to happen. One is going to have to pull the other one along. So either the market goes, uh, either the I fund is going to turn back around and go up with the C fund, or the C fund is going to roll over and go down with the I fund. Um, but it's a it's an inflection point that's good to, to see. Um, so then we get the C and the S funds both kind of fighting for their 10-day moving average, right, to stay above the 10-day moving average, which we've been talking about is pretty critical. Um, the technical indicators for both the C and the S are flat, so they're not really helping us in determining which way um, prices are kind of going to go from here. Then, like I said, the I funded broke down pretty hard uh, on big volume on Friday. So um, we'll take a look at the chart and uh, see if we think the I fund breaking down is going to is going to roll forward, or is the C fund going to take us back up? And how do, how we do that? Basically, we're going to look at some intraday charts. So intraday meaning uh, instead of each tick being a day, each tick is 30 minutes. So the charts we're going to look at are two months long, where each tick is 30 minutes. So you can't really use that to, to actually to trade, because that would be what day traders would use. But we can use it to um, take a look at, at where we think the market might go early in the week. And then finally, we'll be kind of a deep dive, or at least a, a pretty good overview, into volume and why it's critically important to technical analysis. Okay. So first we got the nine month daily chart of the C fund. So each one of those ticks is one day, all right? So we use candlesticks uh, that give us a ton of information. I think we talked about that a few weeks ago. Um, so if we look at Friday, let's zoom in. All right. The last tick on the chart here is Friday. You can see it, it during the course of the day, it went down below the 10-day moving average, right? And then came back up to where it started. So it creates like this T at the top. So it, it basically opened and closed the day uh, at the same level. And during the day, it went down and then came all the way back up. So it was a big reversal day, which is a very bullish sign. Uh, and it came off of... See, I gotta get out of this. Okay. Okay. So we had right here a whole bunch of support, right? Several days, if not oh, two weeks or so, of support along the ten-day moving average, and then on Friday we had a big reversal day and a jump up uh, above the ten-day moving average. We still haven't gotten above the near-term prior high right here. But we're pretty close. I mean, Friday was a big day for the C fund. And it happened on big volume, okay, which we're going to talk about at the end. But big volume, good reversal day, very bullish for the C fund. Okay. If that was the only negative in this chart, really, is that the indicators are flat. It would have been better if, uh, if the MACD, right, had finished positive, but it, it didn't. It's still, MACD is still negative. Um, and the trend is still down. That's the only the only kind of thing to give you some pause on this chart. And that's the best chart that we got for the day. <laughs> it only kind of goes downhill from here. So you get the S fund is next. Technical indicators are flat, right? Flat here. RSI is pretty much flat. Um, we have the same support at the 10-day moving average. But on Friday, the I fund rolled over. Okay, so let's see if we can zoom in with that. All right, cool. So you see where the arrow's pointing at. On Friday, the the market opened uh, right around 1,500, came all the way down, you know, well below the 10-day moving average, and then back up and closed right on the 10-day moving average. All right, so it wasn't a great day, not horrible, but not a great day, Um for the S fund. Definitely not as good a day as, as it was for the C fund. Okay. And then finally, we get the I fund, which did not have a good day at all. So you get the I fund, you get where the, where the C fund was, was up quite a bit. S fund was flat. The I fund was down. It's something like 2.5% on the day on Friday. So a big breakdown. Um, and it also came on big volume. So you can see the, 
The volume there is, is much bigger than the last uh, several days on the iFund. And the technical indicators are negative. They're not flat. They're definitely negative. So you got the C fund, which everything is moving up for the most part. And you get the I fund, which everything is moving down for the most part. So that's divergence. And we will see which, you know, which one wins out. So what to do? Is the market going to go higher or lower from here? Uh, I don't know the answer to the question, of course, but one good way to kind of drill down into it is to look at the intraday charts. So first one is the C fund. You can see, let's see, the last 30 minutes, Right there, the last line in here, because like we said, the intraday chart, this one and the next one is going to be the iFund, but each tick is 30 minutes. So the last, you know, 30 minutes or an hour or so, the market really turned back around and reversed higher. Um, and it did it on big volume at the end of the day. So it's kind of good on a Friday when uh, institutional investors which buy big chunks of shares, which is why the volume goes up. We're going to talk about that here at the end. But when the volume is high, it means people are buying into that price. So there's a pretty good chance that, that we go higher from here, um, at, at least at the beginning of next week. But we definitely had a breakdown in the short-term trend, right? So we were going up from the 29th of, uh, of June right here up to you know, 26th or so of... Uh, of July, right here, we had that trend line. And then we gapped down, right there. Gapped down and, and went sideways and haven't been able to get back above it. So we, we definitely, the trend has changed, right? It's not that it, the trend was up, clearly, and it's not now that the trend is down, it's now that the trend is sideways. So it's consolidating, all right? We're in the sideways consolidation pattern, and the, the top of the pattern is here at about 3280, and the bottom is here at 3200. So anything the market does in between here doesn't really mean anything. It's got to either go up or it's going to go down. And once it breaks below uh, or above, either above 3280 or below 3200, then we'll know which way it's going. Uh, but a horizontal consolidation is usually pretty bullish. It usually... Uh, resolves in the direction of the prior trend, which in this case is up. So uh, odds are that it goes higher from here. And last is the I fund. So this doesn't look good. On the one hand, it broke through, uh, just like the C fund broke through that uh, short-term up trend line. But the I fund did it. It was not a, a sideways consolidation. It's a really big A, B, C uh, correction which is kind of good because at the bottom of that C correction right here, we finished the day, we finished Friday on a, on big up volume, right? See that price right there turned up at the end of the day on really big volume versus the rest of, the, you know, versus all the way back here to the beginning of July. So finishing on big volume on that Friday as the market was turning back up is a really uh, positive sign on this time frame. So, I, I mean, I would really expect the market to open higher. Uh, it may not stay there, but I definitely expect the iPhone to open higher on Monday. Uh, we also got the technical indicators are really oversold and, and turning positive. So this is actually a really good looking chart. If you, it, the, the MACD was oversold and is just barely turning right there. Uh, the RSI is oversold. It's turning back up. You got big volume. You got the price turning back up. You got an ABC correction pattern. Like all those things in line are great. If this was an, an individual stock, I would definitely buy it here. I would buy it here because all the indicators are pointing in the right direction and the risk is basically I would sell it as if it got if it rolled over and got below 6150. So I'd buy it at 6205 and sell it if it got below 6150. So my risk is pretty low and the the, the potential gain is easily up here to 6450. So anyway, that's the idea. 
All right, talk for a second because I need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was enthralled in what you were talking about. Yeah, I'm, sure you were. I, no, no, I was I was staring at the uh, the chart too, going, "What is he talking?" Oh, I got it now. Uh, sometimes I don't know if you guys oh, give us some feedback on this. Um, you know, the chart sometimes is, is kind of hard to read. Uh, so we try to zoom in, but if we need to do that more often, let us know guys. I mean, if you zoom in too much, you can't really see the big picture, uh, obviously. So we, we try not to do it all the time. Um, yeah, it depends on which software. If I, if I record it, um, I don't, I don't do it in presentation mode, and so I have different tools that I can use, and yeah. it's, it's just different. Every way we do this is a, is a little better yeah. pieces of it or whatever, but we're trying to get them all, all together. What's, uh, what okay. are we looking at next? Last piece, <clears throat> the volume. So You don't mean like on, on the recorder volume? I don't mean the volume, how loud something is. No, yeah. not exactly. You could, you could look at it that way, but I'm always talking about on big volume, right? And so... Uh, I actually was kind of glad to get this question. So if you if you want to geek out on it and, uh, and take a look at what the actual definition is, um, the link is here, which obviously, what is it, a link in the show notes? Is that how you say that? Yeah, we'll, we'll be putting in the, in the show notes eventually. <laughs> we haven't quite gotten yeah. that figured out yet. So, uh, okay. So here's the, the, the definition uh, of volume. You can go and check it out with the... Uh, what the technical definition is, but the idea of volume is it's, it's a measure of how many shares are traded over a certain period of time. So, you know, you got, you got the chart, um, you get the price chart. That's the main, the main focus and you get the volume chart that's behind it. So what I'm going to do is toggle back and forth between some of these notes here on volume that I want to talk about and the chart. So here's the S and P 500, uh, one, two, three, four, five months daily. Um, you can see right here the volume is basically flat, right? Volume is basically flat here, and the price is going up, but it's more or less flat. Once the volume starts ticking up, as the price starts to collapse, right? We came through the ten-day moving average here on a big volume day. And for those of you that were getting the alert uh, back then in February, that's when we got out. And that's the short story of why. Uh, volume is critically important. And when it's been flat and low like this for a long time and ticks up really big relatively and the price is, is collapsing through the 10-day moving average, it, it's a no-brainer. It's, it's absolutely a no-brainer. My eraser's not working so good. All right. So all this volume is is a measure of how many shares traded over a certain period of time. So obviously, down here, as the price started to fall, more and more people were selling until we got to this point where you know, everybody was, was basically selling. The other side of that is this day here in March... Down volume is, is red days and up volume is black days. So when the, pri when, when the trend is up, you generally see um, the black volume being higher than the previous red volume, which would make sense, right? When, when you have a whole lot of red, increasing red volume, you should expect to have decreasing prices like this. Okay, And it works the other way too can't see it so well here, but these, um, these days right here, the volume was really big and it's black, right? It's what, it's what propelled these big price, uh, these up days, you know, after we hit that bottom on the, on the 23rd. So you want high, uh, high volume on days when the price is going up and you want low volume on days when the price is going down that's fine. If, if the reverse of that is bad. So, uh, when price increases on big volume, right, it means there's buy-in from large institutions uh, and the price is likely to move higher. Individual investors like us are not causing volume like this. That's caused when, like, you know, the California uh, 
retirement system sells their shares of the S&P 500. That's when you get volume like that. It's not from, you know, me logging into my account and selling a couple of my C fund shares. <laughs> It's not, it's not out. You didn't cause that. I, I probably didn't cause that one. I don't know if I could cause like that little one right there. I, yeah. So, so you don't have to worry about us causing uh, volume issues, but um, they call them footprints because when big institutions, they move large chunks of money. And so you, uh, big volume days are, are footprints. You, you They can't avoid it because um, they can't trade little shares like we do. They have to ch- trade big chunks. Uh, so it, it's great for, if you know to, to look at that. Um, another good example was, was this up day right here. Um, especially coming off, you know, having found support at the 10 day moving average and the, and the price just keeps going higher. I only did out to June and, and we know that, that, you know, the rest of June and July, the market went higher. So, um, yeah, volume is a, is a pretty important, um, pretty important thing second to price. Obviously price is the most important because that's what's actually happening in what we actually um, goes in our TSP account, but volume definitely supports that. Um, and so, like we said, on big volume, whether it's up or down, um, that's what volume is. Uh, when a stock, so the other thing you can do with volume is when a stock hits a new high on low volume, um, this is a one really good indicator that the price is topping out because institutional investors, right, big money, are not buying at those prices. So if the price has been going up while volume is going down, it means big money institutional investors are not buying in. So the little guys like us that, you know, get a stock tip or whatever, we're the ones that are driving the price higher. Um, that's, that's a big red flag. And it's the same on the other side. When a stock's oversold um, on low volume, it's a pretty good indicator that the bottom is is either in or really close because institutional investors are, are no longer selling at that price. So volume is a great footprint and uh, it's definitely the most important technical indicator of beyond price. So. All right. It would be kind of cool if we were doing this live because then we could say, okay, does anybody have any questions out there and you yeah. know all that? But Yeah, uh, we'll, get, we'll get back to live at some point when there's yeah. some – a lot less technical difficulties and a lot less travel. And yeah, yeah. Uh, was that pretty much what you had for us today? That's it. Yep, that's it. All right, guys. Make sure that you, um, uh, you know, put in any questions. You can email. Uh, you can definitely put them in the post, uh, and we'll we'll take a look at the post when where where the uh, video comes out. The other thing is, uh, please, if you like the show. Do us a favor and share it with your friends. That really yeah. helps out to get the word out that we're doing this. And, you know, the hope is is that we're giving some value to you guys and that we're, we're, we're um, you know, just trying to educate everybody on how to do this right. as best we can. The, the one other thing that I, because I, I got a bunch of uh, requests this week, uh, people don't know that we have like a, 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 a service, a service side of this. <laughs> right. Yeah, actually two. So um, if you don't know, um, we do this, this is a pr- primarily an educational website, but on the, on the side, I mean, ideally, uh, you're taking what we're talking about here and implementing it right. to your, your own TSP fund, right? Or your, your personal stock fund or uh, stock accounts or whatever you're doing. And a lot of people do that. Um, a lot of people just want to know that we're doing this and just, hey, tell me what to do with my money, right? So what we do is um, the service, I mean, you can go on, go on the landing page and you'll see it, but the service is um, we, we can't manage the money for you. So what we do is tell you what we're doing with our money before we do it. So um, before I make a move in my personal TSP account, I get uh, on the site and I, and I tell everybody, it comes out in text, email, um, and it's on the website, on the, the uh, member dashboard, where I'm reallocating within my personal TSP account. So if you want to know that information, um, hit the green link on the website and it'll take you to the landing page and you can sign up. Right, and, and then... Um just so everybody understands, I mean, that basically relates to the alerts that we send out when you see that kind of language where you see on the Facebook page or, you know, if, if you are a member, you get an email, you get a text message. We also uh, put it out on Facebook that, that an alert went out. We basically do anything we can to make sure that you know an alert went out. Um, when, when we get an alert, uh, I do just like everyone else does. I go <laughs> and check and see what the new allocation is. And then uh, we make those changes if you, you know, if, if, if you think it's right for your risk tolerance, right? That's right. And, the, and, and, and most of the education stuff that we're doing, that's about helping you figure out 
how to manage your risk tolerance, right? And so you may at sometimes want to be a little riskier or a little less risk. And, and, and if you follow Jerry and follow the things that we're doing, it kind of gives you an idea how to adjust that uh, in, in that case. But it's a, it's a very reasonable, um, you know, price service for what you get. So, uh, again, if you like it, if you already are a member, please tell your friends. Uh, it really helps, um, you know, Obviously, we keep adding resources to this. That's how we got yep. the show going. Right. And uh, we're having fun with it. We hope you guys are enjoying it. And uh, on that note, I right. think it's time to roll out. We got an outro. We got an outro. We're going to do fancy toys here, right? Yeah, some we outro. Do. We'll do some more music <laughs> coming on the way out. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Enjoy your week. Hope you guys had a good weekend. We're probably going to hit the pool. Cheers. Cheers.